Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this black panel and this silver panel and just get to the guts uh, of this uh, Akai tape to tape. So what you will need, you need a very small Allen key here. It's a very small one. I should imagine it's about two millimeter Allen key and just a little screwdriver as well. Just a small screwdriver, something like that will do the job. So what we're going to do, it may be just slightly different from your deck, but uh, bear with me and you'll uh, hopefully have an idea how to take this apart. So there's quite a few things got to come off here. First of all, we've got four screws here. We're going to undo here. They're just here, 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 and here. So we'll take them four screws out first. Okay, we're going to take the top off of this Akai 4000 dB reel to reel. So you're going to need a little Allen key. It's a, about a two millimeter Allen key there. Uh, sorry if my fingers and that are dirty. I've been mucking about with this and haven't washed them. Uh, I've literally done the video straight away. And just a little screwdriver, a little Phillips type screwdriver there. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with this black uh, fascia first. So it's just two screws, one here. As you can see, that comes undone. So don't lose them screws. One over the other side. So they both come out and we've got to take these controls off as well. They should just pull off. They may be a little bit tight, just give them a little bit of a yank. They will come off these knobs. So they're off as well. So we put them aside. And this front now will just lift completely out as so. So that's out. So uh, what we're going to do now is take this silver front off. So there's a few things to do here. First of all, we're going to undo the knobs first. I think this will be the easiest. So there's a little screw at the top of this knob just here. Inside there you'll see a screw. And it's the same with this here. So that's the play and recall. That's the forward, fast and rewind. So just angle your screwdriver in there. And you will find that screw. Hopefully, he says. There you go. Just undo it. Probably a turn or two. And that should just pull off. I haven't done it enough there. So we'll just get back in there and maybe do it a couple of turns. Don't want the screw to come out, that's the reason. Uh, I'm just doing an odd turn here and there. So same with this one, probably about two turns and that'll lift out like so. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is undo this uh, pause button and it's a little Allen key which goes in the side. You'll find the hole and just give it a little bit of a turn and that'll come off with using the Allen key. Next thing we can do is remove this tape head uh, cover. Now you may have two screws on your one. You may have a screw here and a screw here at the rear, underneath here at the side, so to speak, or the back of it. Uh, not the side of it, the back of it. You may want to undo them two screws, but this one hasn't got it. This one just absolutely just lifts off. But normally, obviously, you normally have a little uh, control here. That, I should have mentioned that, actually. You normally have a little, like, uh, lever here that goes between stereo three and two and four and three. And that used, normally uses a little Allen key the same Allen key that you used to undo this would undo that. But on mine, I've got that knob missing. So if you've got that little knob, use the Allen key and that will undo that knob. Okay, so now on my one, like I say, I've got no screws here. So I'm just going to lift it completely off. Maybe a little bit stiff first time you do it, but that lift completely off. Next thing we're going to do is undo this pinch roller. Now, it's got a little silver cap. I've kind of prized mine out a little bit, but you may have to get your fingernails underneath and gently loosen it or I'll turn it just to loosen it and it'll finally pull off completely like that. So that'll be that. And then the uh, actual, the wheel will just come off completely like that. Next thing to do is we're gonna undo four screws here and this screw here, don't forget, the kind of hiding here. So let's undo the four screws first. Okay, that's them four, and don't forget this little one that's lurking here that you can't get to until you take the black front off. So that comes out like so. And now everything should be clear. So now you just kind of, kind of wiggle this front top and it will just come off as probably as easy as that actually. So that's the front of the unit off. And what we're gonna do is take a little look inside.
Okay, I've got the top off now. Uh, this part is the cleaning guide uh, for cleaning the uh, parts where the tape actually travels or touches, goes through, etc. So uh, we're going to give them all a good clean. And I use this solution here to do my cleaning. It's uh, a video cleaner. I mean, uh, you, you probably know the ones to get an alcohol-based kind of cleaner, something like that, that's suitable for tape heads. But this is the one I use. I've been using it for quite a while now, and it does the job well. You can use a cotton bud, a, a nice clean cloth, etc. Something like that. Um, you know, something suitable, something where nothing's going to come off and get clogged up, kind of thing. Um, so the first thing you're going to do, like, the tape comes from this... Uh, spool here it'll pass this kind of guide here this very first guide which is like it's got i don't know what it is but it's like a piece of plastic there it spins around as the tape passes through so you want to put your i have a cotton bud cloth whatever you're using in that gap there and get that as clean as possible so that's nice and clean so that's the very first thing to clean the second part of the tape it passes through i'm not too sure it actually touches it is a guide here so this guide here mine was dirty just give that a good clean as well then onto the raised head, obviously it goes over the raised head, so give the, good, the raised head a good clean. Then onto the next guide here, give that a nice clean. Then onto the recalled head, so we give that a nice clean. Then we first little guide here, these little guides come into play, uh, so give them a good clean. Mine were quite dirty, surprising how much dirt on these little guides here. Then onto the uh, playback head, so give that a good clean. Then another one of these little guides that stick up. Uh, very tiny guides, uh, give that a good clean. Then finally there's another little guide here at the back, right at the back here. So give that a good clean uh, in there. And then we've got the actual, uh, I'm not, I keep forgetting what these things are called, but this, this spins around and kind of grips the tape between itself and this pinch roller here. It kind of grips the tape in between. So what we're going to do is give this a good clean. This was dirty. Now while you're giving this a good clean, don't, don't forget this is a two part kind of thing. This is the seven and a half inch kind of adapter so take that off and that will reveal the three and three quarter inch uh, speed controller there so give that a good clean as well so it's two lots of clean in there so don't forget that don't just do one and forget the other one and when you come to a play a, a slower tape then it's dirty so that gets a good clean now of course it after that it's actually going to go uh, through this rubber roller here I keep forgetting the names of all these things, as you can probably tell. But that would need a good clean all the way around it. Now, obviously, this comes off, so it's much easier just to take it out. I've started cleaning that. It's quite a lot of dirt on there, uh, but it's still a little bit of markings. Hopefully, it's going to get a bit more off. So give that a good clean with a cloth, uh, with that solution, or the solution you're using, all around the rubber. Obviously, don't pre you know, press fairly hard when cleaning all these items. But, you know, obviously, on the rubber, just take a little bit of care. You don't make any indentations into it while you're pressing so hard. So then it goes on to this here, which is like the switch, the micro switch here, which uh, turns the unit on and off. <coughs> uh, well, say it turns it on and off. This is your on off switch, obviously, but this kind of like is the switch that starts the reels going. It detects if the tape's in there and it's taunt. So give that a nice clean there as well. So that's all your units. And obviously from there, it travels onto this reel here. So that's all the you know parts uh, that come in contact with the tape that you should give a nice good clean and when i say a good clean do take your time and really try to you know shine it up so like it's nice and shiny uh, when you shine a light on it it's a nice reflection with no dirt marks on there or minimum dirt marks as possible depending you know how dirty it was in the first place and how uh, you know how well you can kind of bring it up i suppose right I'm just going to show you the tape it's i'm only going to do one but they're all the same i think i'm probably going to you may have already seen a video of me doing this on one of them i'm just going to do the uh, Recalled it here. So with me spray, I'm just going to spray a little bit of my cotton bud. You can hear that there. And I'm just going to get in there. Let's just put my glasses on so I can see it just a little bit better. I'm going to try and hold the head if I can, just to support it a little bit. And I'm just going to go the backwards and forwards motion here, side to side. I'm going to get the old head because the tape runs along the old head. And you'll be surprised that even this corner, this this end of the head here, you'll get some little bit of dirt there. See it now? I've cleaned these knows how many times now. I'm still picking up little bits of dirt, so this is something I could probably do over and over again for quite a bit more time, cleaning it up, and it's, it just seems to sound just that little bit better every time I do it, I think, you know, it's getting that little bit better. So really pushing hard, I'm just supporting it a little bit. You can hear that, hopefully. And there you go, just a very slight bit more dirt coming off that head 
I'll give it another little bit of spray on the other side. I'm also going to go out in the up and down direction as well. Now don't forget, let's just show you that there, nothing at all. But anyway, clean the old head, the old area of the head. It's even these corners up here, because that tape is slightly thicker than the actual head itself. And dirt builds up and moves across and clings to other dirt. So give the old head a clean, the old head itself, the old front of that head. Get it as sparkling as you can, like. So there you can see I'm still pulling off my old dirt. Dirt that's probably just stuck in the corner there. Just want to get it all as clean as possible. And there you go. I mean, I picked some dirt up from the bottom there with that bit there. So another cotton bud. And we'll go in and get as much dirt off as we possibly can. There you go. So, yes, yeah, so just keep on and keep on like that. Spend a little bit of time on all the eggs, that is. And hopefully you're going to get them all coming up really sparkling clean. Like I say, I'm using a, a dirty one here, but these parts here, you want to get in every nook and cranny of them. They all touch the tape. And if there's just a little bit of dirt, it may just crinkle the tape up a little bit. If it starts building up, cause the dropouts, slight misalignment, etc. So get in there, spend your time on there, doing all the bits I pointed out earlier, and hopefully you'll bring a bit more life back into your deck. Okay, now I've got the unit uh, undone, I'm going to start greasing a couple of places. Uh, first of all, I'm going to clean the old grease off. And as you can see, I've already took one of the uh, wheels, cogs, whatever you want to call them out. This is one here I've took out. Now, this is just like a split washer on top that kind of clamps it in position. You take that washer off. Underneath, you're going to have another plastic kind of see-through or, or plastic black thin plastic washer. Pull that off as well. And as you pull it off, just be careful because underneath here, just to this part here, you're going to have a little washer, if I can get hold of it here and show you without losing it. A little plastic washer there, which sits on the bottom on the metal. Just make sure that don't get stuck on here. And as you put it away, it drops somewhere and you lose it. So just be careful. But usually it's still stuck on the bottom. So just take that off as well. Once you've took all that off, you want to get a, a nice clean rag. This has been used a few times, but a nice clean rag and give all this spindle a nice clean. Now you're going to do it for all three of these. These are the three that I did. Same procedures for all. The way to get to this one is to take this one off, which I'll do like this. Uh, once that's off, you can push that aside and you can pull that one off like so. Let's just do that quickly. And as you can see, that comes off as well. And you want to give all these cogs a nice clean where they sit, a nice clean. Just be careful when washes again. Uh, first of all, use two different cloths, get all the grease off of these on the outside because it will be kind of travel around on the outside here, get it all nice and clean and spotless. Once you do that, get a different cloth and you can spray your solution on your cloth then start wiping around the outside, cleaning all the outside of the wheel, all the rim of the wheel. So that's uh, how you do them there. And with this particular one here, it's kind of like got gears on it. You may want to just use a different motion as you go around and try and clean that as much as possible so they kind of grip them. Uh, not gears on it, like um, cogs. It's like a cog kind of wheel, this one. So if you can clean that as much as possible so you can fill them grooves in the cog. So once you've cleaned that, and also I did forget, you just want to clean, I've lost my little cotton bud here. What happened to that? It was here a second ago, but uh, you know, just pretend this is a cotton bud. I don't know what's happened to it, it's disappeared. But uh, you want to get in the middle of this there as well, through the actual, and give that center a nice clean inside because obviously some grease inside there. Once you've done all that, you want to get your silicon grease and you can do this two ways really. You could spray, I say spray, uh, do a couple of dabs in the middle of that cog and put the cog back on the actual spindle or you can just put a little dab each side of the spindle and place that back on. Don't forget to put all the washers back in the correct order so you've got a bottom washer, a cog, a top washer, then that split washer holding it on. Um, you'll soon know, once you start play, uh, so fast forward and rewind on these, you'll soon see if you've got enough grease, or here, should I say, you've got enough grease on these cogs, because if they sound all nice and smooth, 
not making much noise, that's great. If they are making a bit of a winding noise, then maybe you want to re-grease them again. There's not quite enough grease there and plastic or metal is rubbing against metal there. So just bear that in mind. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to, like I say, do these three cogs here. I'd like to uh, let you take your time. You just see me do one very, very quickly. And I'm going to apply a little bit of this silicon grease, well say silicon, sorry, this uh, synthetic grease, should I say, to a couple of these moving parts here. One here, you'll see them with the split washers. Uh, one here as well, where this comes into play here. Uh, anything that moves really, you can see moving. So there's one, two, this one here, three. There's another one there, four. There's a few little parts. There's another one here you want to clean up maybe, just here. As you can see, it's quite dirty, but this looks quite greasy here to me so I'll probably leave that one as it is it looks you know the grease is still like very tacky and that it's not gone hard or nothing so I'll probably leave that one but these are the main three here I would have said and uh, you know maybe these couple here as well but um, yeah look for anything that kind of got this split washer on you may just want to give a, a clean a little dab you may want to take the washer off yourself and do it all completely but all I've done with this is just re-grease them without really taking it all off you know it's still working fine it's all going smooth I mean it's there's no aggro at all, it all feels nice and smooth when I'm doing that, so there's no problem at all at the moment. So that's them three cogs, them three main cogs, all nice and clean, like I say, take them out. You can get your, your rag or whatever and give them a good clean all the way across. You've got more control rather than having them in here and then pressing a cotton bud or your thing against it and spinning it around with your hand. When you take it out of the unit, it's much more easier. And like I can see, you can see all the old grease there probably reflecting up. You can get your cloth right in there and give that a completely like good clean. You know, just take your time and get it all nice and uh, grease free on the outside. Okay, so that's that sorted. Okay, I've re greased all the wheels, cleaned them up, even though it's a few slight marks in there with me and still being a bit tacky in there. But yeah, just make sure all nice and clean there. Uh, what I will say also is make sure you know which way these wheels come off. As you lift them up, keep them in that position. If you start turning them over, you'll see one side looks slightly different to the other. For instance, this has got the groove on this side, and you'll see this one's slightly different as well, as well as this one's got a little nodule sticking out there. So make sure when you take them out, you actually look which way to put them back in exactly the right way up, so to speak. So yeah, we're going to give it a little test out now. I've got it turned on. So first of all, we're going to do the rewind. As you can see, that's working fine. So we go over, we do the uh, forward fast, the fast forward, that cog coming up in the air. And as you can see, that works fine. And if we take this off and go over to play, you can see playing is working fine as well. So that's all done, that's all been re-greased and cleaned up. Even though this one still looks very dirty here, um, it's been as cleaned as, uh, as far as I can kind of go really. I suppose I could take a little bit more time on it. But that's a lot cleaner than what it was so um that's all the uh, cleaning done there okay now we want to clean the uh, switches here and these pots this switch here and the mains on off switch as well obviously have the unit unplugged and uh, what we're going to do for here is uh, just use our detox i've already done these a couple of times now in a couple of videos i've shot and they haven't come out exactly as i wanted them i missed something out so i'm not going to spray it again but you'll get the general idea add these rock these are rocker switches have them pushed up and a little one will appear just here i mean the holes are there but the actual will be a gap there properly the switch kind of moves out of the way inside the plastic rocker and you can give one squirt to each of these switches in the top Part there just as I'm showing you there not the bottom part because that's sealed off you can do the bottom part but you have to do it with the rocker towards the bottom so um, yeah otherwise it covers it up so just like that spray in there and that will clean them switches I mean when I first had mine I kept on having to do this and this to get some sound to come out I kept on dropping in and out cutting in and out but after doing that that was fine don't forget you're going to do all the switches like I said now to get to these uh, what you have to do, you have to undo these two screws here. You'll see, I'll take a picture of that now just to show you. But it's two screws in the bottom, and on the back, I'm going to show you the four feet there. The four feet there all come undone. And this pulls out, this just lifts out like that. This will come away. You may want to stand it up and just pull it forward. And when you do that, you'll be greeted to the, where these two pots are at the back. And to do these two pots, I found the easiest way was just to. Uh, Obviously this case has been removed now, but just imagine the case isn't here, is to tilt the unit up 
this way so you're tilting it on this side so it's laying on this side and spray one of the switches that you can get to at the right angle then tilt the unit so it's laying on this side to get to the other switch and clean that now you can get a piece of hose on here some people put an extra piece of hose of here sorry an extra piece of hose on here that's flexible like um, a pipe that you maybe use for your fishing tank something like that for the air supply something like that a flexible hose uh, you could use that if you wanted to and spray through that and uh, you know find the right angle for you but that will clean these pots now just one more thing i mentioned about this particular pot here on the right hand side is when you come to clean it and putting knobs off etc you may make the mistake of actually this pulls up if you can see that it pulls up just it's only this one this one doesn't move at all but this one pulls up a little bit and when you come to put it all back together and play something or record something one of the channels won't work if you've got that in the up position that needs to be pushed back down then both channels will work so that's cleaning the switches and the controls of this unit Okay, I just wanted to show you how to put this back together. It, it may sound pretty simple, but uh, just a couple of things to look out for is first of all, you know, just lay the lay this top back on. First of all, you've got a recall little button here that needs to be in the right place. But the first problem you're going to come across is this start and stop the pause button here. Just needs to get that completely lined up. Another problem you may get is actually lining these up to drop in at the sides. You may just have to give that little push. So it's a little bit of everything here. So once you get these, so it's going to go you find what's holding it up next which in this case is the recalled switch then this one here just put it through push it down it should all kind of like lay level click in place then you can do your screws up and uh, put everything back together how you found it and then hopefully everything should run a little bit smoother and hopefully sound a little bit better at the same time so that's it that's the uh, Akai uh, 4000DS and you know pretty much maybe a few more of the models in that range uh, cleaned and uh, lubricated um, to best of to best of my ability anyway and um, you know I've done this a few times now I know exactly how it runs and after that it does make a, a major improvement from one you just got off of eBay that hasn't been touched probably for about 40 or 50 years okay so until my next video I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon